Hi class, um, today we're going to talk a little bit about electromagnetic radiation lasers in line. You can find this in your camera book on chapter 15 and then on Monday during lab we'll do demo not only with the ultrasound but also with laser and light. So this chart should look familiar to you from the video on shortwave diathermy. So remember the short waves are over on this end and you can see how the waves um, change in their width as we get farther over to the visible light area. Um, and so we're going to be over in this um, side of the um, spectrum when we start talking about um, laser light and then we'll also do a video on ultraviolet um, radiation which we don't use much in physical therapy but just so that you're familiar with it um, because you will have patients who will have it that will use it um, more likely with uh, dermatological conditions so here you can see the different magnetic fields again this should look um, familiar to you and when you have um, the different planes and how they match up with each other okay and that's how you get that electromagnetic field in the direction that it goes okay so you just mix these two together and voila we have energy um, so laser actually is an acronym and this will be something that you'll probably will see on exam and also on your boards um, so a lot of times you won't see those little dots in between but um, it really stands for light amplification by stimulated emission of radiation so basically you're amplifying that light um, by this energy created by that radiation from that electromagnetic field and this is just an example of a machine and the laser um, we do have a new laser machine so we'll try and give it a go um, we'll kind of learn together as we do it okay um, here's our classification system for these lasers. So we have a class 1, which is less than 0.05 um, milliwatts. Um, so that would be like your laser printer, your CD players. Um, those pointers that we see with the red dot that we use like when we're um, in class and doing our PowerPoints, and you'll see them sometimes in other places, that's a class 2. Uh, class 3 is pr um, pretty much, and 3B are what we use. Those are the um, very low power um, lasers along with um, the ones that we use the goggles with it's the 3b ones so a more therapeutic and then class four those are those surgical lasers that they use um, for actually in surgery so a little bit higher um, milliwatts um, the physical properties of laser in light it's monochromatic single wavelength it's coherent it goes in one direction light with longer wavelength will penetrate deeper so that's kind of important to know the longer that wavelength then that's going to be a deeper penetration um, we saw on the spectrum that it's invisible it's near that infrared uh, frequency ranges and primarily you're going to get the non-thermal mechanisms with this um, so we do use this um, a lot of times in that acute tendinopathies, this is, um, the research out there is showing um, that there's some really good um, results with this. So those of you who are doing this as your um, project should have some fun and have some good things to share with us. So here it's kind of showing the difference between coherent and non-coherent. Um, it's showing you a laser versus a regular light source. So you can see when it says it's monochromatic in one direction and it's coherent, that's what this is saying um, versus this kind of goes out. Okay. The parameters, so we have the wavelength, which is in nanometers, the power in milliwatts, uh, the energy density is in joules per centimeter squared, and it's either continuous or pulse. So again, this determines the doses and how deep you're going to go. And remember, we talked about the length of the wavelength will help determine how um, deep you're penetrating. So obviously these are the parameters you're going to be wanting to document in your soap note as well so that someone can replicate your treatment. So here's a laser probe that's 100 milliwatts and a laser probe that's 100 milliwatts in the tissue based on those nanometers. So you can see when you have a longer wavelength the 900 nanometers how much deeper that laser goes into the tissue versus that shorter wavelength of 630 is going to be a more superficial so just depending on what structure you're um, treating the intervention you want um, will determine like where you want to set those parameters on that wavelength to get the results that you want okay 
So we already talked about the definition of laser. Um, we'll say this again. Light amplification by stimulating emission of radiation. So it's kind of like PNF. We understand why we use acronyms because it's a mouthful. Um, then you're going to see something called SLD, and that's a super luminous diode. And then you see LEDs, which is that light emitting diode. Um, and it's non-coherent and it doesn't have a lot of penetration and then you'll have a cluster which is a combination of all of the above so they'll have a, a sound or a head that has all of these different things in it so you get a little bit of therapeutic effect of all of them so here we got to talk about the application and the parameters so here you can see there's a nice little diagram I mean, we remember that the laser is that monochromatic coherent one that goes straight down and penetrates the SLD kind of goes out a little bit more and same with the LED it even fans out a little bit more it's a little bit more non-coherent okay. so this is showing you how far they go in so obviously the laser goes the deepest it's kind of similar to an ultrasound as far as that five centimeters is approximately two inches um, the SLD goes in about an inch and the LED is very superficial, even less so than like our superficial heat pack. Um, so like we talked about at the beginning of this lecture, this is um, laser and light um, really is more the thermal, non-thermal effects. I'm sorry, I apologize. The more non-thermal effects um, are, you're going to get for soft tissue healing. So this is where you're going to get that APT, ATP production, uh, collagen production, going to modulate that inflammation to promote some fibroblastic healing. It's going to inhibit bacterial growth. Um, you're going to get that vasodilation via the um, chemical mechanism and it will alter that nerve conduction velocity and regeneration. So they have shown that this really does help um, quite a bit with um, nerve damage. So here's our clinical indications for the use of lasers and light. We have tissue healing, soft tissue and bone. We have arthritis lymphedema, neurological conditions, and pain management. And there, in your book, it'll even show you there's some very specific doses and um, that have been approved that work really well if you follow those parameters. So this is just an example. You can see she's got the goggles on, um, and you, as the therapist, will also have the goggles on. And then you have parameters of area that you're going to actually um, dose and treat. The contraindications that direct irradiation of the eyes, thus the goggles. Um, you don't want to do this with the malignancy because you get that ATP production and metabolic rate increases, so you don't want to be producing um, anything that's going to help feed a tumor. Uh, within four to six months after radiotherapy, your tissue is still very vulnerable, and so you kind of want to let that heal before you um, cause any kind of irritation in there, obviously in the areas where it's bleeding and over the thyroid or other endocrine glands. Precautions, again, we have um, the low back and abdomen during pregnancy. You're going to probably see this in almost every modality. And same with epiphyseal plates in children and that impaired sensation mentation. Those four things are pretty much on almost every modality. You want to be cautious of them and use your clinical judgment. And this is where your um, physical therapist evaluation should help guide you in that as well. Uh, photophobia or abnormally high sensitivity to light. Um, pre-treatment with one or more photosensitizers. So that's where, if we were talking about the ultraviolet, there's some certain medications that make people more susceptible to light. And so you would want to make sure you know what kind of medications your patient is on to see if this would be appropriate for them or not. Um, we have adverse effects would be a transient tingling, um, mild erythemia, which erythema now you probably know from exam one means redness, which in uh, ice massage or ice pack is a normal response. Um, but we really don't want that with this because remember we're looking for that non-thermal effects, um, a skin rash, we don't want that, we don't want burning sensation, increased pain or numbness, uh, or obviously those um, hazardous effects to unprotected skin and eyes, okay? So this is just kind of showing you again the laser and its direct coherent monochromatic wavelength versus the LED. Um, that definitely is a more non-coherent um, wavelength. So it disperses out a little bit more. It's not as direct down into the tissue. So here's an example of a soap note. Um, patient reports a 5 to 10 pain over the right lateral elbow, increased pain with gripping. So this probably we're thinking in our head is a lateral epicondylitis. 
um, objectively they checked the scan pre I would just add here that it was either intact or how, what was it that you know just kind of qualify what that skin check was the type of diode used and it could be a cluster one the wavelength in nanometers the power in milliwatts the area of the body you treated and which side right or left sometimes we forget to put that so um, include that in your area of the body and be specific use your anatomy uh, your energy density that's your joules per centimeter squared and check the skin afterwards to say is it intact and there was no redness because remember we don't want that adverse effect of any erythema um, so here's an example tender to deep palpation over the extensor carpi radialis brevis tendon the treatment was a red SLD at 630 nanometers 500 milliwatt cluster 3 joules per centimeter squared um, the only thing I would maybe have said here was how long and um, post treatment was minimal tenderness after light therapy and you might want it to um, have looked at um, the post skin check that wasn't included in there so a couple things you need to add right um, assessment reduced pain and tenderness after light therapy remember we're now focusing more on the actual function so this is great that there's less pain and tenderness but what does that mean does that mean that patient can now grip better um, what kind of function does that tie into so with your assessment I would add in um, some kind of functional assessment with that um, plan continue light therapy with above parameters modify work activities to restrain on wrist extensors um, so that's a good thing and you might even include a home exercise program to help this patient to follow through with some of the things you might have done in therapy manually okay that's it for um, EMR um, and laser light therapy I will see you on Monday to try it all out thanks bye